Good morning. Good morning. It's the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, today, our liturgy is in the bulletin for us, as has been in the past. We may rise for our opening hymn, number 912. <laughs> deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before God, I sing your grace. I bow down towards your holy <laughs> temple, and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you, for you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength and soul you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord. For they for have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly. But the humble he knows from far. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hands against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. 
life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading from the 12th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans 11. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God 
what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together we confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, the begotten of my name, being of one substance with the Father, I knew all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated in there.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our sermon today uh, comes from the epistle reading uh, from Romans chapter 12, uh, these few verses. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. As I was reading the epistle lesson for today, a book came to my mind, a certain reading that um, many of you might be familiar with, or perhaps not. But in the book, Screw Tape Letters, philosopher C.S. Lewis, Christian philosopher C.S. Lewis, he writes a book that is an instruction book. Screw tape letters. This is an instruction book written on how to destroy the faith of a Christian. How to tempt a Christian. It is a book written from the perspective of the devil. It is a book written from the perspective of an older, more experienced demon who's trying to teach younger demons on how to try and distract a new Christian from the important things of the faith. In one section of the screw tape letters, the older demon attempts to teach his protege, Wormwood, how to first cause a Christian to become disappointed with the church. The older demon, he writes this, he says, I note with grave displeasure that your patient has become a Christian. The patient, of course, is a man that the younger demon is tasked with destroying the faith of. Turns out that his patient, this man, has just joined a church. And he's attending. The older demon is quite disappointed. And he says, <laughs> when he goes inside the man, he sees the local grocer with the rather oily expression on his face. He bustles up to him and offers him a hymnal containing a liturgy which neither of them understands. And he hands him one shabby little book containing corrupt texts of a number of religious lyrics, mostly bad and in very small print. When he gets to his pew, he looks around him and he sees that selection of his neighbors whom he has hitherto avoided. The demon begins his assault on this man's faith by first attacking the people in the church. The people whom Christ has died for. The bride of Christ. Or at least he's leading the man to recognize and to see all the faults of the people around him. He continues, provided that any of those neighbors sing out of tune, or have boots that squeak, or double chins, or odd clothes, the patient will quite easily believe that their religion must somehow be ridiculous, that they are not real Christians. At this present stage, you see, the man has an idea of Christians in his mind, which he supposes to be spiritual, but which, in fact, is largely pictorial. In his mind, he has pictures of Christians full of togas, wearing sandals and armor and bare legs. The mere fact that the other people in the church wear modern clothes is a real, though, of course, an unconscious difficulty to him. The devil tries his best to distract us with the faults of everyone else around us at church, or even in our families, and then to project those faults onto the church itself. 
That is, that the people and all their sin that makes up the church, and the church is just, well, not that great. It is true that the church is made up of people, but the church is the bringing together of sinners, uniting them in Christ in the faith. That is what makes us the church. As you heard today, Peter in our gospel lesson confessed who Christ was. This is the rock. This is what brings us together. That our sins are not counted against us. They are forgotten. That we are given the identity, a child of God in baptism as the hymn we just sang. The baptismal font stands here reminding us how we are brought into this church. This church, which is the assembly of those who repent and believe that for Christ's sake, God has forgiven them their sins and calls us to gather together to receive forgiveness. And as St. Paul says, to give our worship to him. The church is united in faith in Christ. The way the devil attacks that faith in unity by the sin of pride, by teaching us to separate each of us away from one another by our sins. The devil's desire is for us to identify and to assign others their identity by their outward appearance or their sins. Like in your family or at work, even at church, you might know someone as the bossy person, the one who always has something to say, the one who always, whatever it might be. It happens in our families and at work. But today in our epistle reading, St. Paul places this idea, this notion, squarely in the vocation of being a church member. Not only just being a church member, but that offering ourselves as spiritual sacrifices to one another is our spiritual worship. It's all too easy for us to begin to stop thinking about each other as forgiven sinners and to identify one another according to our faults. A few years ago, a young person came up from our church, came up to me and was quite annoyed by another one of their peers. It was because, well, they had ended up spending more than just one hour on Sunday in the presence of each other. They came up to me and said, Pastor, I don't know why I ever liked this person. Now that I've gotten to know, gotten to know them, they're very annoying. <laughs> Trying to keep my laugh to myself, I answered, well, it is easy just seeing them in church because you don't really get to know them. Getting to know and to love someone, that spiritual worship St. Paul talks about, that requires time and work. You don't have a choice, I told them. God has put you two into each other's lives, and he has chosen for you to love this person. It requires sacrifice. And our sinful nature does not like to sacrifice. That word, though, in our second reading makes an impactful presence in what St. Paul teaches us. Sacrifice is good. But what is interesting is St. Paul doesn't just say sacrifice. He says that we are living sacrifices. A sacrifice doesn't live. It dies. That's why it's called a sacrifice. But St. Paul makes a paradoxical statement, a living sacrifice. Once a sacrifice was given in the Old Testament, it was dead. It's a one-time deal. However, since we have died with Christ by baptism and been raised with him never to die again, we give of ourselves not unto death, but unto life. A life where we live by faith. In the Old Testament, once that sacrifice was made, God would decide whether or not he would accept it. But as a living sacrifice, 
you and I, we don't have to live day by day wondering if we are acceptable and holy to God. We live with the confidence that God already accepts us. That we live in, with the joyful certainty that God already calls you holy. He calls one another, all of those who you are seated around, God even calls them holy. That's why Paul begins today by saying, I appeal to you. Paul doesn't say, I command you. He's not saying, in order to be acceptable to God, you must live this way. He says, because God has already accepted you, you can live this way. That is what we are by faith, living sacrifices. We are saints in God who do not live for ourselves, but die to our expectations. We die to our pride. We die to seeing each other in regards to our sins or habits, and we see one another as forgiven saints. This is why by faith, St. Paul says, you are a living sacrifice. You die daily to yourself so you may live in Christ for one another. We die to seeing each other in regards to our sin. But first, this must begin with how you view yourself in relationship to God. St. Paul says, By the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment. Sober judgment brings repentance. What is your own righteousness in comparison to what you're given in Christ by faith? What is your neighbor's righteousness in comparison with what they possess and has been given to them in their baptism? We are given the righteousness of Christ. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we would be the righteousness of God. That is not only true for you, but those who you share these pews with, those who are in your family, those who are in the faith. This is also true of those who we share this altar with when we commune. That is why we come together as one body to receive the one body of Christ so that each of us may receive what we need, the forgiveness of our sins. St. Paul continues, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Our spiritual worship is not some mysterious thing that we cannot identify. It is not some ethereal feeling. St. Paul places our spiritual worship right in your vocation. It is how you present yourself for others. If you're always putting others down, not putting the best construction on things, what kind of spiritual worship is that? Well, I'll tell you, it certainly is spiritual, but it's of the devil spiritual. Back in Screwtape Letters, the demon continues, all you have to do then is keep out of the mind of the man this one question. So the devil is trying to keep us from asking this question. If I, being what I am, can consider that I am in some sense a Christian, why should the different vices of those people in the next pew Prove that their religion is more hypocrisy and convention. The devil knows that in judging yourself rightly, as St. Paul tells us to do today, by the Holy Spirit, you will be enabled to sacrifice for all those around you, no matter how much they annoy you, sin against you, or you think they're just wrong-headed. 
each of us has been given to one another to sacrifice for. Your families, your job, and St. Paul says especially you here at church. If you can't sacrifice for your fellow Christian, or even your own family, what business do you have claiming to be a living sacrifice? You are dead in your sin. Screwtape says, work hard then, demon. Work hard on the disappointment and the anti-climax, which is certainly coming to the man during his first few weeks as a member of the church. The enemy allows this disappointment to occur, meaning God allows this disappointment to occur in almost every aspect of human life. It occurs when the young boy who's been enchanted in the nursery by stories from the Odyssey buckles down and begins to really learn the Greek. It happens when lovers who've got married and begin the real task of learning to live together. In every department of life, it marks the transition from dreaming aspiration to laborious doing. When Christ died on the cross, he was the first living sacrifice. He was, in dying for your sins, putting death to death, giving life, victory over death, making ourselves sacrifices that don't die, but live. So being in Christ, we have the same victory. You are a living sacrifice, not a dead one. Because Christ Jesus has died in your place. You are holy and acceptable to God because Jesus has taken away your sins. You are able to now test all things. To discern what is good and acceptable and perfect. Because Jesus gives you repentance and faith along with the forgiveness of sins. You are set free to serve others. Because Jesus has set you free from destructive self-service. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise. <laughs>
and be lived in praise and glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our president, Congress, governor, and all civic leaders in their pursuit of peace and unity. For all judges and magistrates in their pursuit of justice with mercy. For those who protect us from violence and preserve order here and everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all noble professions, for the flourishing of the arts and music, for favorable weather, for the fruits of the earth, for those unemployed, the poor, the homeless, the hungry, and all people in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all families and children, single adults and youth, for those who teach and those who learn, that they may advance in wisdom and grace. For our confirmands and those who teach the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For victims of disaster, for those stricken by illness or infirmity, for the aged and infirm, as well as those in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, for those who grieve the loss of those whom they love, for those who meet with sudden death, and especially for those who've requested our prayers, for Randy, Tom, Bob, Ruth, Barbara, Misty and Harper, Lorraine, Paul, Paul, Jean, Art, and those we remember silently to ourselves. For those battling depression, anxiety, or addiction, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the work of God's kingdom in this place, for our faithful support of the church and the renewal of our parish life through the means of grace, for our communion this day upon the life-giving body and blood of Christ, for our growth in grace, that we may attain to the full stature of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Be merciful to us, O Lord, and hear our prayers. Grant to us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be led into all truth and be steadfast in the confession of Christ. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue on page 10 of the bulletin for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good right and salutary that we should in all places and in all times give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love, shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, on us and given your only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life in your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam 
your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you've prepared for us through Jesus Christ. <laughs> Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name as he taught us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Take heed. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give it to you for the forgiveness of all our sins. Amen. given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.